Okay, so moving on to question two, part A of the 2011 two unit paper. We're given a quadratic equation x squared minus 6x plus 2, which equals to 0. We're told that this has a, a two roots, alpha and beta. Part A is asking us to find the sum of the roots, alpha, beta. So sum of the roots is given by minus b on a. So in the case of quadratic equations, b is the coefficient of x. So in this case, it's negative 6. So b is negative 6. a is the coefficient for quadratic equations, the coefficient of x squared. In this case, it's 1. And so the answer is minus negative 6 over 1. And that's positive 6. Okay, so part two of the question is asking us to find the product of the roots alpha, beta, and that's given by C on A. And so C for quadratic equation is the constant at the end, so in this case it's 2. And A, as we know, is 1, so 2 on 1 is 2. Okay, part three is a slightly harder question. It's asking us to solve 1 on alpha plus 1 on beta. So 1 on alpha plus 1 on beta, if we were to put that under a common denominator, would be it would be alpha beta. So we'd multiply the denominators to get a common denominator of alpha beta. Alpha, to become alpha beta, has to be multiplied by beta. And so what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So 1 times beta is beta. So for beta to become alpha beta, you have to multiply by alpha, and what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top, so 1 times alpha is positive alpha. And so if you look at this fraction here, the numerator is the sum of the products, which we know from part 1 is 6, and the denominator is the product of the roots, which we know from part 2. And so the answer is 6 on 2, which is 3. Okay, so moving on to question 2b, we are asked to find the exact value of x such that 2 sine x equals to negative 3, negative root 3, rather. Um, x has the limits greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay, so using algebra, we're just going to bring the 2 to the other side. Sine x equals to minus root 3 over 2. Um, if you recall, so on our little diagram here with the quadrants, this is our quadrant starting with 0 degrees here. This would be 90 degrees or pi on 2. This is 180 degrees or pi. And this is 270 degrees or 3 pi on 2 and 0 degrees oh and 360 degrees or 2 pi in terms of radians okay now the f this is the first quadrant here this is the first quadrant and all trig ratios si um, sine cos or tan of any angle from 0 to 90 is positive so all a for all um, only the sine quadrant, uh, sine trig ratios are positive in the second quadrant. This is the second quadrant. In other words, cos and tan ratios are negative in this quadrant. So any angle from 90 to 180, the sine of any angle from 90 to 180 is always positive. And in the third quadrant, only tan is positive. So sine would be negative and cosine would be negative here. And here only the cosine is positive. Okay, so. If sine x equals to root 3 on 2, x would equal 2 pi on 3, or 60 degrees. But since it's negative root 3 on 2, it's going to be in the third quadrant, or the fourth quadrant, it's going to be pi on 3 just short of 2 pi and pi on 3 more than pi and so x equals 2 pi plus pi on 3 and 
it also equals to 2 pi minus pi on 3. So this is uh, 4 pi on 3 and this would be I'll just do that this would be 5 pi on 3 so so oops this is our answer and this is our answer for x okay so question c asks us to find the equation of the tangent to the curve y equals to 2x plus 1 to the power of 4 at the point x equals to negative 1 so I'm going to call that x1 and I want to find the y coordinate of that point so to find that I'm going to sub x equals to negative 1 into the equation and that's going to be y equals 2 outside of negative 1 plus 1 in brackets all to the power of 4 and so 2 times negative 1 is minus 2 plus 1 all to the power of 4 that gives me negative 1 to the power of 4 which is 1 so the y coordinate of the point is 1 so we need to find an equation of the tangent at minus 1 comma 1 okay now I need a gradient I've got my point I just need a gradient now so the gradient of the curve at this point to do that I'm going to find the derivative of y so dy dx we're going to use the chain rule so we bring the 4 down and we put it outside 2x plus 1 and we take away 1 from the index so the 4 becomes a 3 and we multiply it by the derivative of what's in the bracket which is 2 and so our dy dx is 8 outside of 2x plus 1 to the power of 3 now to find the gradient at this point this point here we need to substitute x equals to negative 1 so our gradient is going to be 8 2 times negative 1 plus 1 all to the power of 3 and so that's going to be 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 to the power of 3 and so it's 8 multiplied by minus 1 which is negative 8 so we've got our gradient that's negative 8 and we've got our point let's call it point P and so it's a matter of just substituting this into the equation y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 and so y minus y1 which is going to be 1 is m negative 8 x minus ne um, x1 which is negative 1 and so we get 8 outside of x plus 1 um, I'm going to bring this negative 1 across so it's going to be a plus 1 here and it's just a matter of expanding the bracket so it's minus 8x minus 8 plus 1 which is minus 8x minus 7 and so that's the equation of the tangent okay so moving on to question 2d we're asked to find the derivative of y equals to x squared e to the power of x with respect to x so dy dx equals to now if you look at this equation here um, you can see it's actually a function this is a function of x x squared and it's multiplying another function so we need to use the product rule which is v u dash plus u v dash so in this case uh, u is the function x squared and u dash is 2x v is the function e to the x and v dash stays e to the x okay so 
it's just a matter of substituting these values back into this equation um, v e to the x multiplied by u dash which is 2x plus u which is x squared multiplied by v dash which is e to the x okay so it's just simplification and we can write it in factored form like this and so that's our final answer okay question 2e is asking us to find the integral of 1 on 3x squared dx so to begin solving this question I'm going to remove this constant 1 third and place it outside the integral sign so that's 1 third of 1 on x squared dx okay so I haven't changed the question I've just wrote it a different way so that it's easier to deal with 1 on x squared can be written as x to the power of 2 so it's the integral of that and all of that is multiplied by 1 third okay so to integrate this we need to add 1 to the index and divide by the new index and all of this again is multiplied by the third that we just removed and once you find that once we've found the integral we need to add a constant c because these are indefinite integrals um, there's no limit on this integral sign so it's just a matter of uh, expanding and simplifying so this is one third multiplied by x to the power of minus two plus one is minus one over minus two plus one is minus one so that's negative one third x to the power of negative one of c okay it's important not to forget the c and you can write this as minus one on three x plus c so that's our final